All right, welcome back everyone. Today we are going to continue on our watercolor series and we are going to be looking at how this little painting was actually created and we're going to be introducing a brand new technique today and it involves the use of cling wrap. Before we get started with the painting, I just want to thank you guys for joining me once again and if you are finding this series helpful, somebody else might as well. So um, please go ahead and share and uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the painting. All right, so before we get started on the painting, I want to talk to you a little bit about what I got going on with this drawing. Okay, so this is a orange grouper and um, this is all going to be coral right here. This is kind of like an L-shaped composition. So we got this going down this way, this going across and this guy is coming, it's going to be in between the coral, so in between the coral. Now, I hope that the camera picks this up. Um, I did put in some cross contour lines to help me with the patterns. Um, it's also going to help me when I do the colors, because I want this fish to have this three-dimensionality. So I got to think of this body as a cylinder. Um, these here are kind of like cones, and so we have the outer part and the inner part. And you can see there's a lip right there. Oh, excuse me. So there's a lip right there, right? Because that gives us the thickness of the coral. And then this is, um, really you can only see the back of this or the front of it. Um, so you're not going to have a lot of di uh, dimensions on here. So um, after I'm done putting in the spots, I will go ahead and, and erase the cross contour lines before I start painting. Now, the saran wrap technique that I'm going to show you, we're going to use this for the background. Um, and what it does, it creates this very cool effect, and it's very, very easy to do. And then we're also going to be using some salt uh, for this texture down here, and you've seen me do that before. Um, the fish, we're going to be doing through the use of layers. So there's a lot going on in this painting, so let's get to it. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a little bit of frisket and we're going to create a barrier between the background and this area right here, the, the reef, as well as the fish. Um, and I want to do that so that when I do the background and I do the saran wrap technique, it doesn't really get into this area right here. So I'm going to take a few minutes to do that and then I'll show you how the saran wrap works. We have the barrier there, I used the frisket for that, and now we're going to start doing this background. And we're going to use the saran wrap. When you do the saran wrap, what the saran wrap does, it, it clings to the watercolors and it creates these very unusual patterns, kind of like a vacuum. So the two key things that you have to worry about is number one, when you put your colors on, you have to put them on a little bit generous because when you put the saran wrap on, the saran wrap is going to lift some of the colors. So we have to make sure that we have enough colors on there so we don't lose it all. And number two, you have to let it dry naturally. You cannot take the saran wrap off too early and you cannot force dry it, otherwise you lose the effect. So let me show you how this is done and then I'll show you one that's already dried so that you can see the effect. So first thing that I want to do is I'm going to wet this area and my water has a little bit of blue in it and it's not a big deal because I'm actually going to be putting stronger colors on anyways and when I do these colors I want to put them on I'm sticking with the bluish purplish background which is really going to offset the orange grouper right because they're kind of opposites blue and orange are opposites so I'm going to reach in here and I'm just going to start dropping some of these colors in there and like I said I want to be extra generous with this so especially down here right because we know that the sunlight has to be coming from above the water that means as you get further and deeper down it's going to get darker right so I'm just going to be using 
the blues and the purples. And I want these to be pretty random. So you want to make sure that these colors are rich, but you don't want to be for them to be um, um, opaque. Um, you got to make sure that there's still enough water in them so they're not like globbed on. Now up top, we do want to let it get a little bit lighter. So I'm going to use a little bit more water up here just because it's going towards the sunlight. There we go. Now, while this is really nice and wet and saturated with color, I'm going to take Saran Wrap and I'm going to randomly push these into it. You can actually see some of the patterns that are going to be left behind. And then you can kind of play with it. So I'll show you here. If you take the saran wrap off too early, because the paper is wet, it's going to heal itself. So once you put the saran wrap on and you get these cool patterns, you got to leave them. So like right there, those are getting a little big, so I'm just going to reposition the saran wrap. Need one more little piece. And totally, totally random. Really, that's all there is to it. Now we got to let this dry. So I'm going to set this aside for a while. And remember, you got to let this dry naturally. You can't force it with the hair dryer. So here's one that I did a little earlier to get ready for this video. And it's pretty dry. So when I remove the saran wrap, you see all of the patterns that are left behind. And that's really all there is to it. So I'm going to let that painting dry, and then once it dries, we'll come back and start working on the call. All right, it's been about 20 minutes or so. So let's take a peek and see what we got. So I'm going to lift a little corner. Looks like everything is holding. So this is the moment of truth. Remember, this is totally random. So we don't really know what we're going to get until we take this off. So you can see that's some pretty cool patterns right there. Now the paper is bulging a little bit which means that there's still a little bit of water in there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this with the hair dryer and then we can remove the frisket and start working on the coral. Alright we're going to move on to this area right here this area right here and this big thing right here and uh, you've seen this done in, in one of my other videos but the way that this texture was created was through the use of salt so I'm gonna go ahead and wet the area first with some relatively clean water and we're gonna stay with that same color scheme but we're gonna go a little bit more towards the red side so I'm just gonna go ahead and wet this area first And I don't need to be as careful around the fish now because the belly of the fish is going to be in shadow. So it's going to be relatively dark anyways. So it's not as critical, which is why I am not putting any frisket on it. So really, when you use the frisket, the frisket is, is to protect the light areas, not so much the dark areas. So there we go and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pre-mix a little bit, I've already pre-mixed a little bit of this purple 
and I'm just going to throw some of it in there. Clean my brush and then put in some of the red. And all we're trying to do is suggest some coral. We're not going to, here we're going to do more individual ones, but these are just like little ones. And coral, even though they look like plants or rocks, they're actually animals, polyps. And they kind of group together in colonies and create different types of coral. Different colors, different shapes. Get a little bit more of that blue on this side here. Now again, I was pretty generous with the colors here. And I'm just going to go ahead and get a little bit of this salt. And I'm just going to sprinkle it. You can do use different sizes of salt grains. So this is kind of on the thick side. And you can decide how much you want to do. Just like with the saran wrap, remember that you want you want to let this dry naturally. So don't don't use the hair dryer on this. Now while this is working, I'm gonna hit that one, and that one is more to the green side. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of yellow. Again, just here and there, especially towards the top, since we know that the sunlight would be coming from the above the water. And then I'm going to do a little bit of mixing directly on the canvas, the paper. I do have a little bit of pre mix as well. And after this is all done and dried, we can go back and do a little bit of glazing um, to create stronger shadows in some areas. So I'm not overly concerned about the shadows right now. And I'm throwing in a little bit of that blue there just to create a little separation when I do this part right here. So you notice I'm not really sticking to my pencil lines. The pencil lines for this particular part here was just a rough guide. Okay. A little bit more salt. So while that's doing this thing, I'm going to go ahead and underpaint this as well over here. And here I'm not going to use salt, at least not on the first layer. I'm just going to try to do it a little bit smoother. And so what we got here on this outer part right here, we got kind of a, a reddish violet color. So I'm just going to block it in. Again, I'll separate things later when I do the glazing. Near the top, switch brushes, and I'm going to go with a slightly lighter color. So a little bit more of the red without the blue in it. And I want these to feel natural, so I'm not like trying to make perfect lines.
All right, as I move on to this one here, I got to introduce just a little bit more on the blue side, which will give me a separation between this one and this one. And on the outside, there's a little bit more on the green. Again, we're not trying to replicate the, the original painting, but we want to get a general idea of how it was created. So here, I'm going to start off with my phthalo blue. Throw in a little bit of the ultramarine blue and a little bit of the red as well. And I'm letting the water do the mixing for me, so that's the uh, the wet on wet technique that you've seen me use in other videos. Now near this ridge right here, that's the part that's facing up, I'm going to brighten that up just a little bit, and just by throwing in a little bit of yellow into this mixture. that's drying I'm gonna go in on the inside of that one should be dry enough by now And then behind all this, there was a little bit of a greenish plant, which is different than coral. So, some sort of seaweed or something. And a little bit of that same color down here. And I'm going to try not to blend it in with the top of that. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap there for now. All right, so everything has had time to dry. Now it's just a matter of getting the salt off of here. So, just take an old fat, you know, something plastic that won't scratch the paper, it won't ruin the paper, and then just start rubbing this out. So while I'm doing this, I'll give you the tip of the day. Um, when you're working with the, with the salt and with the saran wrap, we know that there's a lot of waiting time and you can't force it. So it's always a good idea to be working on multiple projects at the same time. That way you're not sitting around waiting for paint to dry. Okay, so I'm going to finish taking this off and then we're going to finish out the fish using layering techniques also known as glazing. So let me finish getting this off and then I'll be right back. Now we can start working on this fish. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to layer. Uh, we're going to glaze it basically. So I'm going to start with my brightest color. I'm going to lay that down. I'm going to dry it and then move on to the medium colors. Dry that, move on to the dark colors, etc., etc. And then because all of these spots are relatively dark, I don't have to worry about blocking them. I can paint right over them. So I'm going to get in here with some clean water. And I'm going to wet this area just a little bit. And this is just to get the paint flowing just a little bit easier. Um, and then the brightest color is going to be the yellow. All right? So just paint the whole thing with the yellow. Since we're going to be glazing, we don't have to worry about doing any color mixing at this point. Now this is a choice. Obviously you could do it using one of the other techniques, but I wanted to show you different ways that you can go about doing the, to, you know, get the same effect. Now you'll notice that the pencil lines are still noticeable. And so it's important that when you are doing your watercolors that you keep the colors transparent. Okay, to get into those small areas, I'm going to switch over to my number two. And I'm going to try to keep my body out of the way I'll touch up the areas in between the fins a little later when we get to the uh, final stages but So that's the first layer. Now, because this is, we're not using any of the other techniques, I can actually dry this with the hair dryer. So, we'll be back in a moment. All right. So the first layer is done and dry. So now we're going to re-wet the area just a little bit, very gently. Clean water. And I'm trying not to activate the yellow that's already there. Okay, we said that the light source coming from the top, which means that the highlight is going to be right in this area right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the cadmium red light and I'm going to mix it with the yellow, make it even brighter. And there's going to be a little bit of a color here. brush and then fade it out before it dries allowing the yellow to show through then that I'm not going to touch that I want that to stay nice and light <clears throat> so now I'm going to do the same thing but from the bottom working my way up Keep it in mind, <clears throat> excuse me, that I have to treat this as a cylinder. So it's a rounded cylinder going this way. So the highlight is actually going to be here, and then roughly here starts to get just a little bit darker. And then we'll dry this layer, and then go to the third layer, and then just build up those shadows a little bit at a time. 
the mouth is its own cylinder. So this part here is going this way, this part is going this way. So they'll be treated separate. take a little bit of that same mixture switching over to my number two brush <clears throat> and at the base of these little fins just gonna bring it up just a little bit And again, I'll touch up those areas here in a little while. Okay, let's dry it up and then move on to the next layer. All right, on to layer number two, three. The process is exactly the same. It's gonna reach in here, grab some clean water. And now I'm starting to work on the deeper and darker parts of the fish, which are, in this case, is the underside because it's the furthest part away from the light source. So I'm wetting the area. Again, being careful not to activate the colors that are already on the paper. And then just I'm gonna increase the intensity just a little bit more. So I'm adding a little bit more of the cadmium red to the mixture. And I start in this case, I'm starting at the bottom, and then as I go up, I will wipe off my brush to remove some of the extra paint, and then just fade it away or blend it. So, just wipe my brush, and without adding any more paint basically fade that up. Actually I'm going to add a little bit of water because there's some areas that are drying up a little bit. that is drying I'm going to take a moment and switch to my little brush and kind of get those little areas between the fins there Okay, now let's start working on the mouth. This is the inner part, so we're going to make this dark. And then this has to be like a little miniature cylinder here and another one here. So we want to do, I'm going to do the inside part first. And I need to get in there kind of darkish. So I'm going to do this cadmium red, a little yellow, and add just a tiny bit of the sienna, the burnt sienna. And I want to do this part first. I'm still glazing. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in. I want to leave just a tiny bit of the yellow showing, but I need it to be soft like that. Now, while that's drying, I can actually start working on some of these spots. Now, these spots they're not black they're dark so I'm gonna take some burnt sienna put it over here and 
and add a little bit of this brown mixture and a little bit of the ultramarine so it's a grayish color but it's got a hint of brown or a hint of orange into it and I'm still going to layer so I'm going to just put these in these are not perfect circles so I'm just putting them in and from time to time I'm going to change them so they're sometimes they're going to be a little bit darker sometimes they're going to be a little bit more to the red side sometimes a little more to the orange side and you notice I'm not staying like perfectly in line with my pencil lines again just like before the pencil lines were only there as a general guide the, the dots that are starting to go underneath the fish obviously have to be darker because they'll be in shadow and by using the cross contours it actually kind of reminds me of that even though I erase most of them so you don't see them anymore remember that cross contours is just a three-dimensional guidelines basically to help you make something that's two-dimensional look more three-dimensional make some of these dots a little bit darker and again the color is as long as it's a nice dark color doesn't matter if it's a little to the blue side or a little to the brown side continue to build this up until you get all your details the way you want them show you how to do the mouth and then after that is mostly just cleanup work Alright, I think I'm ready for the last layer. And I'll be a little bit more cautious this time where I wet the water or where I wet the paper. Especially around the lip. And I want to make sure that I don't reactivate these spots that I put in there. Like that one. So I'm not scrubbing, I'm being very careful and I made sure that the paper was completely dry before I did this. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to reach in here and grab some of this burnt sea, or uh, cadmium red and add a little bit of the sienna to it. And I'm going to work upside down. sure this is there and what I want to do is I just want to put in this nice rich dark shadow and remember shadows are not black they just have to be darker whatever color the object is make sure that it's darker it's darker value of the same color and as you've seen me do over and over again, I like to blend where the shadow meets the highlight. Or basically just fade the shadow to avoid outlines. Now there are times, and I'll show you here in a minute, um, where you do want an outline of shadow. I wouldn't say outline, but you want to show a definitive edge. Okay, now, I also want to separate this from this, so take some clean water and I want to wet the one that's in the back, in this case this is red violet one. Notice that all the textures that were in there 
from when we did the uh, the salt they'll still show up so now I'm using straight violet to create a, a more separation between this coral and this one here brush to fade the edge see so, yeah, I don't like that hard line there that geometric line there that looks a lot better I'm also thinking that this fish would cast a shadow here as well so Taking that same violet color and putting in a shadow somewhere underneath this fish. Now because the coral is textured, you don't want to create a nice clean line because it'll look weird, right? The shadows is going to follow the bumps of the object that is the shadow is being cast on. So if I did a really clean straight line it wouldn't make sense. So I'm trying to kind of suggest where the shadow would be in the general shape of the fish but I don't want to create an outline. And then this eye is bulging so that means that there would be a shadow underneath it. So, since we set the light source coming this way, this shadow would have to be here. And I'm going to fade this edge here. Again, I'm keeping the general shape of the, of the shadow that would be cast by that little cylinder but I don't want a hard outline and then that's that's pretty much it from here on out it's just fine-tuning little things you know if you want to add in some more details in the background or whatnot you could do that but for me I'm gonna go in here with a small brush and just kind of clean up some of these edges and I may throw in a few distant uh, plants in the background, but that's it. So, hopefully, you got something out of this video. Um, this one is a little bit more challenging. There's a lot of steps, and you have to be patient. Um, so, like I said before, in this type of painting, you want to have multiple things going on, so you're not sitting around just waiting for the paint to dry. So. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you liked the video, if it was helpful, please make sure to share and pass it on to somebody else. And thank you so much for watching.